الخير And even though outside it's a dreary day, the Lord has shined his countenance upon us today and has blessed us. We transform today the dreary and rainy day into a most glorious day of thanksgiving, <coughs> of honor, and of worship. Part of this glory and honor is also due to our most holy Theotokos and our Virgin Mary. And because of the fact that, as Abuna Gatas said last night, I have come from the mountain of Athos, bringing also the blessings of the Holy Virgin because as you know so well, this holy mountain is known as her garden. And she makes her presence well known in her garden. She walks amongst us. She makes fragrant the paths that we also walk on. And some of you I know very well who have visited Mount Athos, as they are walking along the paths, all of a sudden are saying, what is that? And they're looking to see what flower is around. But there is nothing. It's all rocks. Today I have brought with me a very special gift which the Virgin Mary gave to us on her feast of the entrance into the temple November 21st, according to the old calendar, in 1989. There was a monk who was in his cell just before the vigil of this feast day, and he had a dream. He saw himself walking up the path of Simonoptera, going towards the cave of our founder, St. Simon. And as he was walking up the path in his right ear, he was hearing the great paraclesis to the Virgin Mary. And in his left ear, he was hearing the small paraclesis of the Virgin Mary. How this can happen, Adir, I don't know. But there was no confusion. He was hearing both paraclesis very well and understanding all the words. Can you imagine the glorious moment when all the voices became one as they were chanting, Axionestino Salithos, it is worthy to call thee blessed. O oh, Lady Theotokos, at that moment, all the heavens started to change different colors. From the beautiful blue that it was, it began to become a deep purple, a magenta, a red, an orange, a yellow, a pure white. And at that moment, it was as though the Virgin Mary herself was going to appear right above the holy mountain. And there was such a fragrance that this fragrance woke up the monk from his dream. And what does he realize? He realized that his room was full of fragrance. His beard was full of fragrance. And all he could keep on doing was And he got up, he opened the door, and he went outside to see, is the fragrance even outside? And the fragrance was even in the corridors. He ran like a maniac to see how far it went. And no matter how far he went, 
the fragrance was there. On the following day, it was a day off from work. All the fathers were resting. It was a Monday. And on Tuesday, the person in charge of the storage room where we keep the oil, his name was Father Hariton, he went down to prepare to wash out all of the large ceramic jugs which we have within which we store our oil. November 21st, for many of you who know about olive trees, you know that in early November is when we harvest the olive trees. We had no longer any oil in our monastery by the month of October and we had to purchase some oil. However, on the 19th of November, it was the Saturday, we received a new batch of oil from our metohio, our dependency, Ormilia, which is a convent which has 110 nuns, and they have many olive groves. So they sent us immediately seven large plastic jugs filled with oil. And that oil was down in the storage room waiting to be poured into the ceramic jugs after the process of washing out the ceramic jugs was going to take place. Father Khariton began with one jug that had filled up miraculously in 1973 when the Brotherhood of Yerunda Emilianos left from Meteora in central Greece and came to Simonopetra to reman the monastery because it only had 10 very old monks that were there. This jug, whoever was in charge of the storage room, they would always begin drawing from that jug every year as being a blessed jug of oil. And right over that jug was an icon of the Virgin Mary, known as the one who guides, the Odeitria. So when Father Hariton went and lifted the wooden cover from the ceramic jug, what does he see? The jug is filled with oil. And he said, wait a minute, I know that I did not have oil in this jug, because every year, I begin drawing from this jug. So he immediately went to the jug which was right next to it. And he lifted the wooden cover and that jug was also filled. And so he said, well, I am a little bit of a forgetful individual. Maybe this year I did forget to draw from this area first. But something wasn't right for him and he said, no, this is impossible because I know that I did not have oil in these jugs. What's going on here? He went to the third jug, which was to the right of the miraculous jug. Now you have to understand, the area where this, these jugs are, it's a very low arched area and you have to crawl in to get there. And he said, I would never ever begin with that third jug because it's too difficult to get to. If that jug is filled right now, it's possible that I forgot to draw from this area. If it's empty though, that is my sign because I would never ever draw from that jug first. So he went over, he lifted the lid, and I don't have to tell you what the result was. Yes, it was empty. So he went immediately to the abbot, Yeron de Milianos, and he told him of what happened. And on the feast day of St. Catherine, November 24th, Yeron de Milianos announced to us this miracle. This miracle 
has provided many other miracles for us at the monastery and all over the world. Not only have people witnessed the fact that when they take from a bottle and they empty it into another bottle and they have half filled with both bottles, in the morning when they wake up, they find both bottles filled. Many women will use this oil and put a drop in to their vigil lamp. And yet, the level never goes down. Other people, like my godmother, who when my father came from my tonsuring on January 1st of 1990, just after the miracle happened, she was dying from cancer. When my father got off the boat, he said, I have bad news for you. I said, aren't you going to say hello to me first? No, I have bad news for you. I have to tell you. Your godmother is dying and they give her only two months to live. She has cancer that's spreading all over her body. My mind immediately went to the oil. And I gave him two bottles and I said, bring this to my godmother and tell her to anoint herself every day and just to believe and say her prayers to the Virgin Mary. So two months passed, three months passed, and I heard nothing from my godmother, nor from my parents, nor from anybody. Six months passed, and my sister was leaving from America to come to Boston, to Thessalonica, to see me and to travel in Greece with her husband. Just before she was getting ready to leave from her home, the phone rang, and she went inside and answered it, and it was my godmother, six months afterwards. And she said, I want you to tell Father Yakovos when you see him, I have just returned from the doctors, and they can find no cancer within me. And my godmother died on December 31st, of 2012. 22 years after, they said she was going to die in two months. And she did not die of cancer. She died of natural old age. Praise be God and his Holy Mother. I have brought with me some of this oil. And I have also brought a small card of the icon of the Virgin Mary. I have asked Father Joseph to distribute these icons because he came late last night and he was not able to greet you. This, I think, will be a beautiful way of saying hello to everyone. And as you pass by to receive the blessing from the Holy Cross, from Abuna Ghataz, you will pass by also and be anointed by this oil. May the Holy Virgin bless you and sanctify you so that you may find a place in her son's heavenly kingdom. Amen.